welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we're going to be making another Star Wars creature. Today I'm going to be making a feather. Now this piece was originally for a commission and that's why it's not going to be a perfect example of what the creature looks like in the movie. The person that commissioned me wanted the fur to be a darker brown with a little bit of a red tint to it, so that's why it's a little bit different. So if you want to match more of how it's portrayed in the movie, you're going to want something that's more camel or cream color for the fur. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, the first thing we're going to do is work on the pattern, that way we can get our fabric cut out. So to do this, I put a bunch of pieces of paper down and I taped them together and then I just drew out the shape that I wanted. Once I was happy with the shape, I just cut it out. And this is going to be our main pattern for our feather. The only thing you'll need now is a strip of fabric for your tail and a strip of fabric that's going to be the belly. The only difference between these two strips of fabric is one, the tail is going to have a kind of bulge at the end to make a tuft of fur, and the other one for the belly is just going to be tapered off once you get to the end of it. So using my pattern I just traced it onto the fabric that I wanted and then I cut everything out. So for the fabric pieces you'll have a left and a right body piece, a strip of fabric for the belly and a strip of fabric for the tail, and then you'll have the inside parts of the legs. To do this all I did was I cut the legs off of my pattern and then I traced that. So the first sewing that I worked on for our feather was the tail. So what I did was I took that strip of fabric that we have for the tail, I folded it over, and then I sewed the two ends of it together, kind of creating a tube. And then one thing that I did was I pulled my string tightly while I was sewing it to give it a little bit of a curl. The next thing that I did was I took our body pieces and the inside parts of the legs that we have and I laid them out. We're going to sew along just the fronts of the legs. We're going to leave the back of the legs open so it's a lot easier to add our wire frame later. The next thing that I did was I took the strip of fabric that we have for our belly piece and I sewed it to the body. I connected it from where the bottom of the neck is all the way down and I ended where the tail would connect. I did this to both body pieces, connecting everything and making it into one piece. Now that we have majority of the sewing finished, we're going to move on to making the wire frame for the body. So that pattern that you drew out for the fabric, you're going to take that and use it as a guide on how to cut your wire. To make your wire frame, you're going to need to cut three pieces of wire. One of them is going to be for the spine, so you're going to measure from where the neck of the piece is all the way down the body and the length of the tail. And then your other two wires are going to be for your legs, so you're going to measure from the tip of the toes, or at least where the toes would be, and then all the way up to the shoulder blade. Then you're going to go across the body until you get to the hip bone, and then you're going to measure all the way down the back leg. Once you have all three wires cut out and bent into the proper shapes that you want, you're going to take them and you're going to wrap them all together with a thinner wire. So basically the body wire is a 14 gauge and the thinner wire that I'm using to wrap is a 20 gauge. Okay, now we're going to start on the clay pieces. So first we're going to make the face and then we're going to move on to making the feet. So I'm going to take a large lump of tin foil and I'm going to shape it roughly into the size of the head that I want. And then I'm going to press that onto the base of our glass container and I'm going to start covering the whole thing in clay. Now the clay I'm using is Original Sculpey. It's a type of clay that can be baked in a kitchen oven because the bake temperature for it is very low. Now I'm going to be taking a glass container. This is just an upside down candle holder and I'm going to use this as a base. That way I can have something to hold on to while I'm sculpting. Now you don't have to use the same type of glass that I'm using. You're welcome to use a drinking glass or a mason jar or something like that. It just has to be a type of glass that's oven safe. Once you have a good base of clay to work with, we can start adding more clay to make the shape of the muzzle, and then we can also start shaping the clay a lot more to get a rough idea of what our face is going to look like. Once you have a good rough idea of what the face is going to look like, you can start adding the features. So I'm going to start by adding the eyes. So to make the eyes, we're going to take two balls of clay, try to make them as even as you can. You want them to be the same size. And then you're going to find where you want those eyes to go and then you're going to press them into the face. Once you have your eyes placed, you're going to take strips of clay and you're going to lay those out where you want the eyelids to go. So you're going to start with the bottom eyelids and then move on to the top. You'll want to take your time with this because this is where most of the expression in the face is going to come from. And you want to get your eyes right. Thank you. 
Once I'm happy with the eyes, I'm going to move on to adding the details for the mouth and the nose. They're very simple, it's mainly just line work. And then the last thing I need to do is add a fur texture to the clay. This is not one of those pieces where I fur the face, so I'm going to sculpt all the fur itself. So I'm going to take a sharp tool and I'm just going to start scratching it in and changing the different directions and making sure that the fur lines go naturally with the face. After I'm done with the face and I'm really happy with how it looks, I'm going to go set this aside and have it waiting to be baked. I want to try and bake this the same time as I bake the feet, that way I don't have my oven going all day. Now feathers look like they're a creature that should have hooves, but they actually have paw pads and I thought that was a really interesting detail to have. So we're going to start on the paw pads first. To do this, I'm going to take some balls of clay and I'm going to smash them down on a surface, that way I have a nice flat surface to work with. I'm using tin foil for this so that they're not directly on my countertops and they're easier to move around. Once you have a surface laid out to work on, you're going to take smaller balls of clay and you're going to push those into the clay where you want the toe pads to be. And then you're going to take a slightly larger ball of clay for the base of the foot pad and you're going to push that in as well. I'm going to use my other tools to start smoothing out the edges and then we can put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about just 15 minutes. You just want it hard enough that way you can work with it and not worry about bumping it or anything. Once your clay paw pads are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start adding them to a wire frame so we can continue making the feet. So I'm going to use some hot glue to connect them to the wire. This is only a temporary connection. You're mainly just wanting them to hold on to the wire long enough for you to sculpt the rest of the clay and have that baked. So once you have your paw pads glued into place and the glue has all dried and cooled, we're going to start adding clay to the wire frame. Once you have your wire completely covered and you like the basic shape of the foot, it's time to start working on the toes, at least the tops of the toes. So you're going to take more balls of clay and you're going to push those on the tops of the toes right above where the toe pad is. And you're going to start blending them into the foot and shaping them. Now one thing I'm doing is I'm using my tools to help clean up the line to where the toe turns into the toe pad. Um, you don't have to do this. If you want to make your feet look a little bit furrier, you can kind of blend it in with a nice fur texture. But I'm going to go for a really short furred look with just adding a little bit of texture to it. So I want a nice even line. And then once I was happy with the shape of the feet and I have them all finished, I'm going to put these along with the face in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for probably about 45 or 50 minutes. And then once all your baking is finished and everything has cooled, we can start on the painting. But again, remember, this piece was a commission and they wanted the fur to be a lot darker brown and have a bit of a red tint to it. So if you are going to be doing this piece and you want it to look more like how it is in the movie, you're going to want to use more khaki and cream colors to get that look. So the first thing I'm going to do for the painting is I'm going to take a nice dark brown and I'm going to primer all the clay pieces. I'm going to make sure everything is completely covered and the paint is nice and even and we're going to let that dry. Once that's dry, we can start adding some highlights and some lowlights to the fur to make it look a lot more natural. After I have all the fur painted, I'm going to move on to doing the eyes. So to start, I'm going to paint the far corners of the eyes a nice creamy white color. I don't want it completely white because um, your eyes are not naturally solid white. There is a little bit of a color to it and if you did solid white, it'll look kind of creepy. After that, I'm going to take some black and some brown paint and I'm going to start making the iris for the eye. And then I'm going to take some more black and make the pupil. Lastly, I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to make some little spots on the eye where it would look like light is reflecting off of it. 
And then once the face is finished, we're gonna move on to painting the legs. I've already got them primered, so we're just going to add some highlights and lowlights, and then I'm gonna paint the paw pads a black color. And that's basically all I'm doing to the feet. And then once all my paint is dried, I'm going to apply a thin layer of resin over everything to help protect the paint. If you don't want to use resin, you can use a spray-on sealant or some kind of brush-on varnish. Now that all of our clay pieces are nice and finished, we can start putting everything together. So we're going to start with the legs and we're going to connect these to the wire frame. So I'm going to take the wire that's sticking out of our foot and I'm going to connect it to the wire of the wire frame. So I'm just going to use a 20 gauge wire to wrap these all together. It's the same wire that I use to connect all the wire pieces for the wire frame. I'm going to do this to all the feet and then we can start moving on to attaching the fur to the body. So once you have all of your legs finished, we're going to move on to taking the fabric piece that we have all sewn together and we're going to run all the leg wires through the holes for the legs. And then we're going to take our glue and we're going to glue the fabric around the base of the foot and then you can take your needle and thread and sew the back of the leg up and stuff them. After the legs are finished, we're going to move on to adding the tail and the head. So for the tail, we're just going to run the wire that we have through the tail and then we're going to glue the tail to the base of the wire frame. And then to connect the head, I took all the tin foil out of it so it's nice and hollow. I'm going to put some glue inside of the head and then we're going to push the wire into place and hold it there until everything is dry. Now normally once I have the head connected to the wire frame, I start gluing the fabric around the neck, but we're going to add the ears first. So right here I have some felt the color of the inside of the ears that I want, and I have them already cut out into a rough idea of what I want the ear to look like. I'm going to take that and I'm going to glue it to the backing of the brown fur, and then once the glue is dried, we're going to cut that out, and then we can glue it onto the head. Now after the ears are glued into place, I'm going to take the fabric for the neck and I'm going to start gluing it all the way around the head. And then after that you just need to stuff the body, sew up the back of it, and then I did one final thing where I took my shaver and I just went over the fronts of all the legs to make the fur a lot shorter, that way the body isn't so fluffy. I do need to apologize for not having better pictures or video of the finished piece. I had completely forgotten to take it before I had mailed the piece off to the new buyer, and these are honestly all the photos that I have of him. Okay guys, and that's how I made a feather from Star Wars. I really hope you enjoyed today's project. If so, leave me a like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!